You're listening to Life Repurposed with Michelle Rayburn, where you'll find uplifting and practical advice for everyday living, creative inspiration for do-it-yourself projects, and recommendations for books and resources that will encourage you to embrace your life repurposed. I'm your host, Michelle Rayburn. Hey there, thanks for joining me for Life Repurposed. This week, I'm going to be talking about how to be free to move forward. In episode number 47, I introduced the idea of being stuck looking out the rearview mirror. And this week, I want to give you some next steps if to continue that idea of changing our focus from looking back to looking forward. I've met many bitter people, and I've noticed that most of them have something in common. They're stuck on something from the past. It consumes them, and the negative thoughts and feelings erode anything positive they might experience. When something good happens to someone else, the negative people can't rejoice with them. Instead, they look for some way to point out a downside. I've also noticed how easily I can become pessimistic and fall into bitterness and resentment. It stems from buried hurt and old attitudes, and because I'm aware of this, I've made a conscious effort to deal with negative emotions. As with driving a car, it wouldn't take long before I crashed if I attempted to move forward without my eyes on the road ahead. If you've ever tried looking away, I mean, cell phones much? (laughs) Looking away in the rearview mirror, I cannot drive with my focus only there and have my car going down the road at 70 miles an hour. It's just a recipe for an accident. So the following four steps have helped me to be free from the negative influence of old regret and pain, both my regrets over things I've done and my pain over hurtful things that have been said and done to me. I want you to know that you can be free too. So as I share these four things, they are a little bit of an acronym and spell out the word free. So let's begin with the first one. The first step in getting free is F, forgive others. You may never get an apology. You may never be able to confront the person who deeply wounded you. That person might not even realize how he or she ruined your life, and that doesn't seem fair. You may never see justice or your perpetrator might never bear any consequence for his or her actions, but you can still forgive. At first, it doesn't seem fair to let it go, but forgiveness does so much for a wounded heart. It prevents that offender from being able to have the ability to continue to wound you from within. So they don't know they're hurting you. But when you're stuck in the past, it continually wounds you over and over. So forgiveness is for you, not for them. It might be for them if it's also bothering them and they have regret from the past, but that's separate from this. Your abuser or the person who wounded you beyond words or the family member who made your life a daytime nightmare does not deserve this forgiveness. And yet, forgiveness is the important thing to do. Forgiving is probably the last thing you feel like doing, but the Bible teaches us that forgiving keeps Satan from getting an advantage over you. So it might not matter to the offender, but it matters greatly to your own spiritual, emotional, and physical health, and it's the antidote for a poison that eats at your soul. It's important to note that we can't forgive on our own, but God can do what we cannot do. It takes the power of God's Holy Spirit in us to let go of justified anger. And I want to say that you are justified in the anger you have towards that person. They possibly did ruin a portion of your life, but you can still move forward free from that. And that's the important thing to know. But it is not something you have to just suck it up and do it on your own. God has said, I am here alongside of you. And he gives us an example of forgiveness that helps us to be inspired to be able to forgive too. Jesus Jesus prayed a prayer to his heavenly father while he was on the cross, asking him to forgive the horrible people who had tormented and beat him and then hung him on that cross. And he said in Luke 23, 34, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. If anyone could be justified in holding a grudge, it would be Jesus. He was innocent, and yet he forgave those who mistreated him. And so he's our example for pardoning those who have wronged us, especially if we are the innocent ones who did not deserve what was done to us. So this is about forgiving the wrongs done to us. But what about the mistakes we have made and the things that we've done that we deeply regret? Well, number two is R in the free acronym. R is receive grace. 
Have you ever said I could never forgive myself for that? Or do you ever wonder if what you have done is too awful to forgive? As a wife and as a mother over the years, I've made many foolish mistakes. I've tossed around harsh words and criticism. I've wounded the spirits of my loved ones in anger. And so many times they've forgiven me for when I act selfish and bratty. But sometimes I hold on and wish I could undo. And there's like this moment sometimes where even though I've confessed my sin to God, there's still this cloud of doubt in my soul that makes me think, well, was I really forgiven? And I start the negative talk and words come up like stupid and loser and failed again. And I try to figure out how to forgive myself for messing up. And then I go to the word of God and I realize that I'm already forgiven. God already offered to forgive whatever it is that you've done when you confess your guilt to him and ask for forgiveness. And he did it in advance. That's the cool thing is that we don't have to wait around. He said, it's wiped clean already. You just have to ask for it. And so there's no need to worry about whether sin is too big for his grace because nothing is too great. So you can forgive yourself because of his forgiveness. And it's as simple as receiving the grace that he offers. It sounds way too easy, I know, but that's the beauty of grace. We try to complicate it by thinking we have to do something special to receive it. And some people think they have to do good things for other people to make up for their wrongs. But God's grace doesn't come with conditions. He just accepts you as you are. No pre-cleaning necessary. He just says, come to me and I can take care of it. So we can forgive, we can receive grace, and we can receive forgiveness. Number three, E, we have some elimination to do. And that is eliminating guilt, shame, and regret. When you have forgiven others and you've been forgiven by God, you have no need to live in guilt for your past actions. With his forgiveness, God wipes away the shame for what has been done to you and the regret for your wrongs that you've done to others. And sometimes, yes, there are consequences and fallout, but you have to remember that there is no shame even if you're working through some of the consequences that come along with our actions. So we eliminate guilt by reminding ourselves that God has removed guilt and shame and we are no longer condemned or labeled by our past. And that means sins and actions. And this is what the Bible refers to as being justified. When we give our life to Christ, God removes our guilt as if it had never happened. He removes shame too. No matter what has been done to you, stand before God as a beautiful woman who has loved and restored to purity because of grace. So instead of looking in the rearview mirror and wishing you could have a do over on your past, you can look forward and live without regret. Some people try to compensate for shame by turning to alcohol or drugs or other addictions, shopping, overeating, anger, overachieving, whatever the coping mechanism is, it's tied to the view in the rearview mirror, not the front windshield. And God assures that we can let it go because he's taken the shame and we don't have to haul it around anymore. The final E, the second E in free, is to engage in the present. This is the step of being free from the past and engaging in the present. When we have our narrow focus on the past, we can miss the beautiful and wonderful things we have right in front of us. So this involves looking around and noticing the things we've missed because of bitterness and anger. So engaging in the present involves noticing the blessings you've overlooked, the opportunities you have to start over that God has given you, and it's a new view moving forward in the present and into the future. So you have this new front view when you're free. When you forgive others, when you receive grace, when you eliminate guilt, shame, and regret, and when you engage in the present, you have a new front view. Freedom doesn't equal perfection, but without the emotional burden of the past, God is free to work on us. And that's what I love about a life that's been repurposed, is there are still flaws and scars and all those things there, but God has made us free to move forward. And we can begin to reflect his qualities as a forgiven and free person, to enjoy the present and to dream about the future. And so today, I just want to say to you, press on, friends, a whole world of opportunities wait outside your windshield. 
I want to leave you today with a resource like I always do. You will find a link at michellerayburn.com slash 48. Again, this is from chapter four of my book, The Repurposed and Upcycled Life When God Turns Trash to Treasure. You'll find a link to that book and also to the accompanying small group discussion guide. If you are a small group leader, there are discussion questions and some creative ideas at the end of every chapter, but a much more in-depth Bible study in the small group guide that I wrote that's a separate book. So today's creative idea that I want to leave you with is looking at a way that you can change your focus from the past to the present while not forgetting about the past. So sometimes the best way to let go is to see an opportunity in helping someone else get through a similar situation. So it might be the woman whose husband left her for another woman who has the empathy needed to lead a Bible study for divorced women, or someone who is abused that volunteers at the abuse shelter, or somebody who went through anger management and has conquered anger over the past, who's able to teach others how to be free from that. So God often repurposes your experiences for his glory. So I want to leave you today with the question, where might you be able to use your painful experiences to be a blessing to someone else? This is your opportunity to focus on the future and use whatever pain you have from the past, whatever experiences you've been through, as an opportunity to make a difference for somebody else. And therefore, you begin looking forward with glances in the past instead of living in the past. Thanks for having coffee with me today or taking me along in the car. Again, you'll find the show notes for this episode at michellerayburn.com slash 48. I hope you have a blessed week and I'll see you next time. You've been listening to Life Repurposed with Michelle Rayburn. Check out tips, resources, and inspiration at michellerayburn.com. I'd love it if you would subscribe to the podcast on your favorite platform, Apple Podcasts, Google Play, iHeartRadio, or Spotify. I'd also love it if you would like, review, and share the information about this podcast with your friends. Thank you so much for listening.